Men in the High Castle is fucking garbage, and it is the worst alternate history show I have ever seen. Everyone already knew that, though. Let's talk about it. All right, internet, you win. I'll admit it. My video on why Man in the High Castle was the worst alternate history show was the worst video essay I've ever and will ever make. It barely addressed why things were bad, and when it did have real criticisms, it was not backed up substantially. So I'm here to apologize for that disgrace of a video. But I'm not here to take back what I said about that damn show, so it's time for round two, baby! Woo! Look at me now, Ma! Let's just skip the recap this time around, since you've already seen this show. In a timeline where the Axis powers won World War II, a girl named Juliana gets a tape that shows a timeline where the Allied powers won World War II. She goes on the run and finds a cool cast of characters who help her take down the Nazis. Whoa! If you find that recap insulting, that's how much I hate your show. Anyways, if you haven't seen the show, you don't really have to watch it, and you can just turn off the video. Anyways, let's talk about that gem of a character, Juliana Crane. I don't think I've seen a fandom that hates its main character more than this one. Juliana Crane is probably the blankest slate character with a brain the size of a grain of rice. From the second she was introduced, her sister gives her the film, then promptly gets shown to the pearly gates in the span of about five minutes. And what does Juliana do to cope and mourn her sister's death and loss? She doesn't! She just watches the film she was given and goes off to join the Resistance, who promptly doesn't want her. Then she just keeps bugging them about it, like she assumes she's the only one who can save reality. And it's infuriating, because the things she does in this show hinders the Resistance's cause more than anything, and gets countless good people killed, including her own boyfriend's family and several resistance leaders. Oh, and also she kind of lets a Nazi spy escape because why not people can change them, am I right, Juliana? Anyways. People who say this show is good, despite Juliana being as useful as a sack of rotten potatoes, I have this to say to you. You need your main character to be good at when the show revolves around her and her adventures. Like it or not, she is the main focus of the show, and she will interweave herself into other plotlines, so she has to be well written and likable. If your main character isn't likable, then you'll get a show where the fanbase likes the Nazis more than the literal resistance to all evil. And if the fanbase roots for the villains more than the resistance, then we're going to be disappointed when Juliana Crane, the least deserving person of a happy ending, is crowned champion of the show. It doesn't help that the Nazis and the Imperial Japanese have better plot lines and leading characters. It's a lot like Breaking Bad, where we find the drug overlord more deserving of a victory than the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency. While both sides are well written and we gravitate towards Walter White and root for him, the last few episodes had the fanbase mighty upset that his family hated him, and him being the literal murdered drug kingpin of the Southwest. This show spans four seasons, so naturally there needs to be some filler, you know? It's natural for any show. Well, this show takes the cake, because man, does nothing happen in it. I made a joke about this in my last video, but... Oh man, there is so many scenes of characters talking and listening and arguing about things that don't matter, or missions only for there to be long periods of absolute nothingness before something just kind of happens. It's like every scene they shot was thrown in for nuance and ratings and such, and nothing was on the cutting room floor. It baffles me, but several plotlines about the German Super Aryan Society and the whole Chancellor plotline just kind of ends at the start of Season 3 with Hoisman getting capped by his son. Yeah, and by the way, Joe Blake going around and being a Nazi agent and just killing a couple of dudes who were involved with the plot was not a good conclusion to that plotline. A murder plot like that against literally Hitler and the entire Nazi high command would have had to been a far-reaching plot into every corner of the Reich, and it just ends with a handful of dudes in the leader dying. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. And I already talked about the Aryan Lebensborn people were the most useless plot convenient ways of convincing Joe that being a Nazi is cool and hip, 
but I talked about that in the last video. And the major idea of most of this show is that there is a multiverse that's unexplored and there are people who can travel between it, but like, they never do anything with that. Barring Tagomi, the plot lines with Juliana and John Smith in our timeline just don't matter. I mean, literally, think about this. There was no plot point except establishing an arbitrary goal that the Resistance has to stop the Nazis from invading other timelines. Which, of course, goes nowhere because the finale was oh so rushed. Let's talk about Russia. I'm going to keep this section brief because my last video had a whole section about this and my thoughts have not changed. The BCR was a bad choice for season 4, because they were shoehorned in in the last season, and they could have worked if they would just been introduced earlier. The finale was hugely rushed, and basically ground Juliana's, John's, and the BCR's plotlines to a halt. There is not much of anything in this season besides the Japanese leaving the Pacific States, and then a bunch of minor plotlines go nowhere. And I blame Amazon, because this really wasn't the showrunner's faults. But at the same time, just cut the fat and work to give the final main plotlines a better and more fulfilled conclusion. And show the process of, I don't know, I'm the spitballing here, denazification under Bill, or the BCR's reign over the Pacific States. And not just end it with the portal sequence. Because it makes little sense and just ends the finale with a bunch of random people instead of some key figures from the show who had maybe died or gone on to do something else and not just revolving around a bunch of people coming to live in Nazi world. Alright, I'm done. Okay, I'm just trying to get my points out in a better fashion than the last video I made, because this is mainly a response to that one, but it should be viewed as the same video essay. And thanks everyone for watching, you know, like and subscribe, please tell me what to improve. Alright, see ya.